ITR boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. I'm going to ask you some real interview ask questions. Um, yeah. Why did you become a boxing promoter? Honestly, I'm going to just be honest, bro. My biggest pet peeve in boxing is watching businessmen that have never been a boxer in their life, but run boxing. And, you know, there's not a lot of boxers that could run boxing because all they do is fight. And that's totally respectable. I get it. But, you know, being a fighter, I understand how it, how it is being being A side, B side, cutting weight the day of the fight, injuries, everything. So when I go and see one of my fighters, and I'd be like, they they tell me something like that, I can be like, yeah, I can relate. And you know, so that that's pretty much what it comes down to. It's just it's just I want I want to, uh, and I also see a lot of promoters that that just screw, screw their fighters over. You know what I mean? And, and it's a it's a messed up business, but I get it, and that's what it is. It's a business, but it's also a sport. Once they're done fighting, they don't care about them. You know what I mean? So my job is to hopefully take care of them financially and and guide them and educate them of what what not to do and what to do. Good. Well, I mean that's a great. So basically, you're. Coming from the perspective of a fighter, as many or many may not know, and you had a crazy career, you had a good career, um, you took a lot of different types of fights. You took A-side fights, B-side fights, all different types of fights. And you want to take your experience and guide some of these young fighters and build them up the way that you believe you can through the experience you had in your professional career. Yes, absolutely. There's just a lot of things that... Um... When I became a professional fighter, if somebody would have guided me with 50% of the knowledge that I know to this day, because there's a lot more to learn, but I've learned a lot. But if somebody would have gave me at least 50% of the stuff that I know now, I it would have been a whole different ball game. But nobody was there. I had to figure a shit out myself. Um, and there's a lot of good kids out there that are really good but they don't have that guidance. They don't have that knowledge. They don't have that, that person. They don't, they, they, it's boxing, bro. It's, it, it's hard. Everybody just sees you're a pro. They see you're not signed to anybody and boom, they want to just, you know, uh, put you in a, in a very stupid fight and just, just fuck your career over, you know? Well, the oldest trick in the book is a guy's like, we'll say six and oh, 10 and oh, and then you get the show box fight for 15 G's. And then people go, let's jump on it. It's a 15 G fight. Whereas sometimes it's better. I guess the, it really comes down to how much money does a promoter have to keep running shows and keep a fighter active. And on top of that, from a matchmaker's perspective, what's the balance between taking hard fights to developing a fighter so that they can really win a big fight? So I guess I asked you a lot of questions there, but when you hear all of that, what do you think in your perspective to that stuff? Well, like I said, boxing is a business. So the way I see it is an investment. Um, I, sooner or later, you're going to have to take that high risk move and do it. But you really got to sit down with your team and be like, okay, are you doing this? For money, are you or are you doing this to be a champion and for money? But you want to do it the right way. So when you're at 10, 10 and 0 and somebody offers you fifteen thousand, that's that's it sounds like a lot of money. And matter of fact, it might be a lot a lot of money for some fighters that are just dead broke. But at the same time, you want to have you want to stay straight on that line. Now, I'm gonna go a little bit to the side and be fifteen thousand dollars sounds like a lot. But if you establish, if you're with a right promoter or right um, advisor, I don't like to use the word manager too much because I personally don't think you really need a manager. An advisor, okay. A promoter, okay. But a manager, Let I mean, I get a caveat. It. There's a couple of managers out there, I think, that really serve their purpose. And then I think there's a lot of guys that use the title manager 
to yeah, you. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. You know what? You're right. Um, the thing is that I personally think bad managers in boxing outweigh the good managers. I agree with that. And that's that's where I personally got the bad taste of it. That's why I kind of talk shit, you know. But, but it's just I see a lot. I've I've experienced a lot. Um, so I mean, you know, fifteen thousand dollars sounds a lot, but when we have a good somebody good on your corner. They can get ten thousand dollars in just sponsorships and just boom like that. But and you're taking care of your career. So fifteen thousand dollars really is not a lot when you have a, uh, somebody guiding you the right way. Um, I mean, maybe 20 and 0, 18 and 0, okay, we're talking, but at, you have to be at the right weight because there's a lot of boxers that fight at a heavier weight coming up in their career and they slowly start drastically coming down to their actual fighting weight. And let me just say that for the, the fans. So what you mean by that is someone might really be a 130 pounder, but they might campaign between 135 to 133 until it's getting to the fights that actually make make sense because they don't want to cut those last pounds. Yeah. And and, in those last pounds, those last pounds, it doesn't one pound or two pounds doesn't seem like a lot, but trust me, it's a lot. Well, those are, that's the fatigue from what i've heard i've never had to really really cut weight the way you guys do yeah that's when you lose a round or two in your legs is that little those little x that's why you see guys miss weight and drink the water because they don't want to have that feeling it's tough man like uh, a weight cut it's it's uh wow it's it's like it could be a whole nother sport man it's it's tough 